Our next guest is staying up late with us here on Football Americas, Mark Ogden. Avi, I don't actually know where you live. Uh, where are you joining us from right now? I'm just outside of Manchester in England, Sebi. So, um, yeah, it's pretty dark, it's pretty cold, and it's pretty late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at Herc. Herc's not missing that at all. It's uh, his sunny weather out there in, in California. Well, it's right. perfect to have That's you right. back on the show, I should say. Back on the show, because we've had you on Football Americas. Uh, before, but it is the end of the transfer window. We want a lot to talk to you about. Uh, let's start with Christian Pulisic because when we were in Doha, we talked about it and it seemed like it was a move that was going to happen. Like everybody wanted to see Christian Pulisic leave Chelsea. Pulisic wanted it. Chelsea wanted it. Uh, it didn't happen. So why do you think it didn't happen? And then where does that leave Pulisic now with Chelsea? You know, I think it's a pretty basic reason he got injured and the injury wasn't just a, a short term injury. It's, it's a bad one. It's a bad knee injury and he's out for months rather than weeks. So, you know, Chelsea knew that once that happened, there was nobody that was going to take him and, and risk not being able to play until maybe March, even April time. So, you know, if you're going to take Pulisic on loan, you need him to have an instant impact because he's the sort of player that you bring in to, you know, beef up your attack. And there's no point having a guy that, you're, you know, you're spending wages on to play for half of the season. You can't even play for half of that half of the season. So Pulisic missed out on his move because of that. I think you look at who Chelsea brought in, a player every other day by the seeming, by the way it's gone. He was obviously going to be one of the players that they were going to move on. You know, Hakim Ziyech was, was, was surplus of requirements and that move to PSG fell through. Jorginho's gone. So I'm pretty sure that Pulisic would have gone and gone quite early in the window. We know that he was offered to Man United. He was offered to Arsenal and to Newcastle. I know there was a... There was an interest from United because, as we've seen about Veghorst, they wanted to bring a player in on loan who would be no commitment beyond the end of the season. So Veghorst fits that bill and Pulisic could have done. Different kind of player, but that's the sort of player that United would be looking at, a player that wouldn't have a long-term kind of commitment to the club. So what it means now is that obviously he gets to the end of the season and he's clearly going to go in the summer because Chelsea mm -hmm. have made so many signings. They have to bring some money in now. They have to start offloading players so they can balance the books. I mean, they're not going to balance the books. It's impossible. They've spent £350 million pounds this window. But it means that they can get players off the, off the squad. They've got 33 players now in, in, in the first team squad, the roster that, that the manager has to deal with. So, Christian Pulisic, he might not play again this season. He may have played his last game for Chelsea because I don't mm. see where he plays with Mugwick, with Joe Felix and all the rest of the players. So this could be the end for mm. Pulisic. This could be a long, drawn-out farewell, really. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Agu, you say it could be the end for Christian Pulisic. He's got to go in the summer. And you mentioned that he was offered to Manchester United and perhaps Arsenal as well. So what's the level of interest around the Premier League in Christian Pulisic when it would come to a summer move? Yeah, I, I think it changes in the summer. I, th I think in the winter window, I think clubs are more prepared to take a gamble on a, on a play that's a short-term fix. I think when the summer comes around, the clubs like Newcastle, Man United, Arsenal, they're going to be shopping at the top end of the market. You know, Man United want a top striker. Newcastle, if they get in the Champions League, will be looking at very high end. I think Pulisic then will struggle to get a move to those clubs because if they're looking to spend maybe under £150 million, they're going to be looking for players that are A-listers. You know, and with all due respect to Christian Pulisic, he's not an A-lister. He's not a player that will make a difference at that level. He is a good player that to have in your squad. But as we've seen at Chelsea, a, a club of a similar stature, he's not been able to make a difference. So I guess if he's going to stay in the Premier League, he's going to be looking at a club that's knocking on the door, maybe a, you know, an Aston Villa, maybe maybe that level. And that, that isn't great, I suppose, for people who, who rate Pulisic. But I think that's where he's at. I don't think he's going to get a move to a, a top six Premier League club. Europe's slightly different. I think you look at La Liga, you look at, you look at Germany, maybe Italy. I think he could find himself at a Champions League club in those countries because I think that... The market obviously will be dominated by the Premier League clubs, so those clubs will be looking for the players that the Premier League clubs aren't interested in. So I do think he'll end up at a top club. I just don't think it'll be a top club in England because there's so much money in England now that they can buy whoever they want. And I don't think Christian Pulisic is in that league of players that they want to buy. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.